Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got some exciting stuff, starting with why Apple broke up with Intel, AMD beats their 25 times efficiency target, Nvidia becomes the first to support DX12 Ultimate, free performance, and a first look at AMD's upcoming Ryzen XT refresh CPUs. Okay, it's news time and first up for today it looks like we finally have a good idea as to why Apple decided to cut ties with Intel and make their own processors. Believe it or not, the story originally comes from a former principal engineer at Intel, and according to him, this all goes back to Skylake, Intel's CPU architecture introduced back in 2015. In the article by PC Gamer, he makes it clear that Apple had some major issues with the quality assurance of Skylake, going as far as to say, quote, when your customer starts finding almost as much bugs as you found yourself, you're not leading into the right place. He ultimately blames that for the tipping point. Apple apparently always considered doing it themselves, but when Intel delivered such a poor product, it all but assured it. At least, that's one engineer's take. Obviously, there could have been numerous reasons, but one thing is for certain. Skylake definitely didn't help Intel. Of course, as gamers, we love desktop PCs, and if you've been debating on components, check out kit.co slash gamermeld where I go over some that I suggest. Plus, each part I add a short description for why you may or may not want it. It's currently in the early stages, so I'll definitely be adding more and keeping things updated, including some builds based on pricing. And most of the links are affiliate links, so you're helping the channel out. Make sure to check that out at kit.co slash gamermeld today. Next up for today, in a new video by AMD, the company announced the plans they made back in 2014 to improve energy efficiency in their mobile processors 25 times over by 2020 has come true. In fact, they exceeded it. Using their new Zen 2 based mobile Ryzen 7 4800H, the company officially beat their 2014 processors in energy efficiency by 31.7 times. That's definitely a huge jump in just 6 short years. All I can say is, I'm impressed. Next up for today, Nvidia just launched their newest GeForce drivers. Of course, a driver release isn't typically newsworthy, but these come with a couple really nice features. For one, it's the first driver to support Microsoft's new DX12 Ultimate. Remember, that's the new API that brings together tons of different ray tracing features along with variable rate shading, mesh shaders, and more. At the end of the day, we knew it was coming, but it's nice to see it here so soon. Now, the second thing NVIDIA's new driver brings is hardware scheduling that came with Windows display drivers from the new May Windows 10 update. Well, technically it's not new, it's just a new API feature. It's actually a bit confusing, but the question is whether it really helps performance. Luckily, numerous outlets have already tested the new feature in games, and after going through numerous tests, it actually seems to help and hurt. Basically, it seems to be a mixed bag. On the one hand, hardware scheduling seems to mostly up minimum FPS, which can ultimately help games feel more smooth, but it can also hurt FPS by a bit. Ultimately, it seems to not only depend on the game, but also the API and the GPU. It also seems higher end cards with more VRAM don't see much of a difference. Hopefully with it being a new feature, we'll see it improved over time, but it's at least nice to see it can help for now. Lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen XT refresh CPUs are merely weeks away from launch, and that means benchmarks. Originally found and shared by Tom Apisak, we have brand new benchmarks on all three CPUs from the same platform. That lets us get a good performance look before they're here. The benchmarks all come from Geekbench, and they were tested on Gigabyte's X570 Aorus Master, with 64GB of memory set to 3200. When it comes to performance, you can see that both the 3800 XT and 3900 XT scored over 1400, while the 3600 XT fell a bit short. At the end of the day, these numbers seem to give AMD's Ryzen XT CPUs around a 5% increase in performance. Of course, further testing needs to be had on overclocking, but I wouldn't expect too much. That may not sound that great given the price, but luckily, in a recent report by X Preview, AMD's Ryzen XT processors do seem to be cheaper than the price AMD's non-XT variants launched at, meaning they may launch on sale, making them more comparable to the current pricing of AMD's Ryzen 3000 processors. Let's hope that's the case. 
So all that does it for today, what do you think of the news? Excited for the Ryzen refresh or are you waiting to try out the new Nvidia drivers? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great